I'm so busy lately, and now I gotta do a Doctor Strange review. I don't even know if I could do that. I don't have the time to do it by myself. But I don't have to do it by myself. There's a whole multiverse of Toms out there that must be working on a review. I can just bring one over and you can do half the work for me. Oh man, this is a great idea. Coming in hot from another universe. Woo, wait a minute, this is a multiverse. You're, the, you're, you're exactly like me, except for one key difference. Check out that bad boy. That's right, I'm the beautiful Tom. Oh, so what, I'm the ugly Tom. I actually think that might be the ugly Tom. Oh, a mirror. Ha <laughs> ha, maybe you're the dumb Tom. Ooh. You know what, get, get out of here. Get out of my universe, go. Oh, what a disappointment. Well, I mean, it's worth one more shot, right? Bye. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. Mm. Uh, see you at the next convention. Balloon Tom. I think I'll miss you most of all. Godspeed, my friend. Ooh. I have. Bye. <sighs> I guess I'll just do it myself. You opened the doorway between universes, and we don't know who or what will walk through it. The Doctor is in. The multiverse, that is. Cumberbatch is Cumberbatch, bitches, and he's mad. As the Marvel Cinematic Universe takes a step into the multiverse, we ask, is it worth you taking a step into the multiplex? Do you see what I did there? Should you see what they did here? Will you stay here and see this review? Uh, I lost myself. I'm confused now. After the longest gap between Marvel sequels, at long last, we finally have another solo Doctor Strange film, which comes after the seismic shift in the MCU post Endgame has now landed with the Herculean task of setting up the multiverse for what presumably will be the next phase of films. And with the director, the caliber of Sam Raimi, and the seemingly endless possibilities of the multiverse, it's hard not to be a little bit underwhelmed by Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Don't get me wrong, there are parts of this film that I absolutely love, but after months of rumours and speculation, it just feels like the multiverse aspect of the film was a bit underserved. And I'm not saying I'm someone who wanted or expected a slew of cameos, although I do feel like we could have got a few more in there without detracting from the story too much. But it does seem like the multiverse itself was a little bit underserved. We didn't go to many different multiverses. It didn't seem like there was much of a difference between them. In fact, they generally felt pretty pedestrian. And as a result of that, it's hard not to feel like the film is a bit of a well of untapped potential and surprisingly meagre. Without giving anything away, our new character, America Chavez, is able to go into different universes in the multiverse. And because of this, she becomes a bit of a target. She stumbles into our Marvel Universe of Earth 616, and Doctor Strange does his best to protect her from those threats. Which is a surprisingly straightforward story. I would even say there might not be enough there to sort of sustain the running time. And as a result of that, at times it feels like there's a lot of padding in the story. And it also just feels like it's pretty poorly executed at times in a very sloppy way. For example, a lot of scenes feel very similar. Uh, it gets a little bit redundant towards the end. It also feels like there's things that should change the dynamic of the story only for the film to revert back to that as a result. And for a film that's barely over two hours, at times it feels like it could even have been shorter the way it's structured here. I would also say the film feels very reluctant to even engage with the multiverse at times. Maybe they're worried they're going to burn people out on this big concept too early on, but it has the unintended effect of making the film feel very small in scale and also making the universal threat they could be facing feel pretty small as well. It might sound like I'm really down on the film, but there are parts of this that I really did enjoy. For example, visually I think it's one of the stronger MCU entries. There's some weird and creative visuals that really did work and fit the tone of the film for me. It's also not afraid to be colourful when it needs to be. Tonally, it's the total opposite of colourful. It is dark and pretty violent. There are some pretty brutal scenes in this and I would say it might be the most violent MCU film and also the first film in the MCU that I could think of where maybe you might want to leave the kids at home for this because it can be pretty intense. It's definitely not as fun or light-hearted and certainly not as many laughs as the other Marvel films. They're there, but I, I don't know. I think there's some things in this that might freak a few young kids out. I will say, I also like the direction and the cinematography. That was better than a lot of the Marvel films. And yeah, you can definitely say this is a Sam Raimi film. And considering Marvel often get, you know, accused of watering down the director's style, that's not the case here. It's weird and wacky and has a goofy sense of the macabre. It's a Sam Raimi film, everyone, for better and for worse.
The cast also do a really good job. I mean, Cumberbatch, as always, is a very good Doctor Strange. He has an abrupt snottiness that makes him very unlikable, but I do think the film did a better job here of giving him that humanity to make him a little bit more balanced. Benedict Wong is also always fun, especially now that he plays the Sorcerer Supreme Wong. Uh, he has great chemistry with Cumberbatch, and it's always nice to see him along for the adventure. We should also talk about newcomer Shoshi Gomez, who I hope I pronounced it right. Her, her name is... I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'll give it a go. Um, she was very charismatic and likeable. Uh, I thought she also felt like a, a pretty believable character, and I look forward to seeing more of her, as I'm doubt, no doubt she has a place in the MCU going forward, and I certainly welcome it. But undoubtedly, the film belongs to one person, and that has to be Elizabeth Olsen. I can't get into her story too much for spoiler reasons, but I think she's excellent in her role as Wanda, and I think we're all more appreciative of that post-WandaVision, and in general, she's been getting a lot of great development in more recent entries. And here is where they capitalise on that development, for a performance that felt different, but also a lot more emotional, and certainly very well earned. I felt like she had a lot of focus in the story, and it was very welcome. I loved the role she played in the story of the film. What I will say to those people who maybe haven't seen the film yet is that in the age of the internet and with the rise of comic book films, it feels like a lot of these movies have an unfair burden of expectation. First there was Spider-Man No Way Home, and now we've arrived at Doctor Strange, which people had speculation that we were going to get cameos from films that are decades old. We were going to get cameos from films from other studios. We were going to get cameos from films that never got made featuring A-list not actors, just as some sort of nod and a wink to the audience. I mean, there was people that thought you'd have to basically see every Marvel film ever to get this film. And I would say that is A, not, a, not the case at all, and that B, if you temper your expectations with this film, you would have a lot more fun with it. But I would say some of my major issues was that it didn't deliver in some other key areas. I do think the action in the film was a little bit inconsistent, like there are some cool magic battles that are really creative and fun, and then there's like laser light show ones that just don't really do much for me. They just felt a bit disappointing and lazy. There's a scene with Wanda in the multiverse, which was awesome. It was really excellent, brutal and surprising that I loved. There's a magical music battle that people online are being very critical of. It's very cheesy. I loved it. I was very Sam Raimi, but not everyone is going to like it. It's not to everyone's sensibilities. I will say the ending to me felt like a little bit anticlimactic. Uh, I applaud them for not going the usual big fight ending, but it just felt very simple and very obvious and just, I don't know, is that what you want from what's meant to be a very big film? It just kind of felt like, oh, okay, and that's the end. Right, okay, we're done now, I guess. Uh, which, you know, is fine. It just feels like we could have had something a bit more exciting, perhaps. Uh, I will say, though, I was never bored with the film, and when the film is at its chaotic and crazy uh, action, it is when the film is at its best. The soundtrack in the film really did have its moments, which again is not normally a strong point for Marvel. I thought Danny Elfman's score, even though sometimes I find it to be a little bit repetitive, and I find that of a lot of his work, I thought there were moments where the score really worked and did some heavy lifting in some of the scenes, and I appreciated it. And I also appreciated the horror vibes in the film. I knew it was never going to go full horror, because, you know, that won't be for everyone, but I, for one, really appreciate that. I went further with that than I thought, because, as mentioned, that won't be to everyone's sensibilities. Multiverse of Madness is undoubtedly a strange film, and not just for its protagonist. It feels like a film that had this untapped potential to be incredibly epic, but came out a little bit reserved, as if it dipped its toe into the multiverse pool instead of diving right in. That being said, it does have things that differ it from the usual Marvel stuff in that it's darker, more violent, and more horrific, while also being cheesy and goofy, and in that way, it's undoubtedly a child of its director, Sam Raimi, who it does feel would have been served better with a tighter script. But what does serve him well is his directorial instincts, which are surprisingly intact after going through the Marvel machine, along with his embracing of the weirdness of this world and a cast who really does give it their all. And while the film doesn't exactly tear the universe a new one, it does offer a tantalizing tease about what's to come next. But it does have the effect that it feels like Multiverse of Madness feels less mad and a bit more mid. Miss you most of all.